So uh, my name is Maren Wolston. I am um, a faculty member in philosophy at Minneapolis Community and Technical College in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm also our open education consultant um, at, our, at our college. Um, one of the things that I've noticed in all of these years of trying to advocate for open at my institution is that it takes time to explain what open is um, to administrators and to faculty. And um, in the U.S., right, we like immediate um, uh, you know instant gratification um, and quick fixes and whatever and so um, if you try to sit down and talk to somebody about all of these other you know benefits of open sometimes they get distracted right or they have to especially administrators like you get 10 minutes to, or 10 seconds to talk to an administrator and then they're off and so all they hear is one piece of the story and it's probably the piece that you know gets perpetuated in narratives like throughout the country in the US and that is this narrative of the economic benefit of OER right um, so this is what everybody, not exclusively, but this is the sort of dominant narrative about OER in the United States, um, is that it is a, a way of providing materials to students for free to combat textbook costs. And I think maybe one of the reasons why this is so much a part of the narrative of OER um, in the U.S. is because of the absolutely outrageous cost of education. Um, and so this is something, but it's, it's kind of this, um, it's a distraction, right, that we're talking about OER in terms of the economic benefits because really what we should talk, be talking about is, is how ridiculous um, it is for the, the immense amount of student loans that people come away from college with, which isn't something that any faculty member can control, right? But we can control the cost of our textbooks. So that ends up being um, part of the narrative because we're not legislators and policy makers, right? And so, <laughs> and so we talk about the things that we can do something about, but it is doing a great disservice to the open movement in the United States because we're not, we're dismissive or we're not cognizant um, about, we're not putting as much time uh, into talking about the social justice element of OER and open education. Um, uh, all of these um, open pedagogical practices that you can engage in in order to leverage the voices and the knowledge of your students and so they can put their stories back into the commons or their expertise into the commons and training folks to understand that this is a lifelong skill if they want to be a lifelong learner or that they they always have this opportunity um, to be able to share openly with the rest of the world and to uh, extract information right through open resources uh, open access publications and so on and so forth instead of always having to be within an academic institution where you can use you know library databases that you have subscriptions to um, by virtue of you being a student so so I understand, I mean, to some degree, why the narrative is different in the U.S. Um, and versus in Europe and other places, but I think it also probably creates a, a, a bit of a divide. I mean, I was l sharing with you a minute ago that um, that when I go to open ed conferences in the U.S. and I don't want to, I'm not a trying to be a representative of all experiences of folks in the U.S. at open ed conferences, but there is a greater emphasis on the cost of textbooks for ver probably the reasons that I was mentioning a moment ago because textbook costs are outrageous and college co costs of college are outrageous and this is something that we as employees at colleges actually can control but um, some of the things at, so this is the first time I've been to OE Global and it's been like this really awesome experience because it's like yeah 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 costs like we know we get it but here's all this other awesome stuff that we can talk about and collaborate on which is this the hard stuff right to figure out how to effectively effectively implement open pedagogy how to be somebody that's supporting other faculty members in their implementation of open pedagogy. And those are the same things that are being discussed here and these political you know, ramifications um, of, of open education. So, so it's been really rewarding and I hope that at some point in the U.S. that this is what our conferences become. <laughs> but, but yeah, not, not yet, I suppose. But yeah, I think there are many of us in the movement that are lobbying for this and it, um, it just takes time, right? So yeah, for lobbying for there to be this more robust conversation.